All right, so welcome to Brain Training. Um, my name is Stephanie, if you didn't already know. Um, we are working through the month of October. We're working on foot, ankle, foot, ankle, proprioception and connection, and also uh, kind of working into the theme of balance and agility, and then working into the theme of training our eyes and vestibular systems to uh, coordinate balance, agility, and the connection to the feet. So we're going to leverage our sensory systems between our eyes and our vestibular system to help us connect into our body, into our feet um, to support those movements. So um, last week, we kind of just did an introduction uh, to the foot. And so we're going to kind of repeat a little bit of what we did last week with the foot warm up, but then I'm going to be adding in some eye drills and some agility type drills as well. So we'll do most of the class. Um, Either you can do it in a chair or or standing um, if you, if you're able to stand. So let's start with that foot warm up. You're going to need a nice release ball, um, preferably something that's sort of slightly soft. A tennis ball works great. Um, if you don't have something like that, you can use um, a can like a canned food, but the softness is is really nice. So I'm just going to bring my camera down so you can see my feet properly. Let's go ahead and place the ball underneath one of your feet. And we're just going to push into push into the ball in any and all places of the foot. And you may notice for yourself that there's a particular place that needs a little bit more love and attention and you can spend a little bit more time there. Hopefully you're already barefoot for this. In general, for my classes, I prefer if you can be barefoot, because I want you to be able to increase the sensation and awareness that you have on the bottom of your foot and connection into the ground. If you're wearing shoes, um, that relationship gets a little mold. So if we're trying to heighten our senses, we wanna take away any of the barriers there, like shoes. All right, so go ahead and come to Bring the ball to the top of the foot and then try to wrap your toes around the ball and then let them flare open as best you can and then wrap the ball the toes around like you want you're trying to grab the ball and then flare and of course if you need to hold on to a wall or a chair to Keep your balance, make sure you're safe. And last one. Good, go ahead and bring the ball to the back side of your foot. So not necessarily at the tip of your heel, but kind of right in front of your heel. And we're just gonna um, twist the heel over the ball, almost like you're trying to uh, step, I'm sorry to be morbid, but like step on a bug or something like that, and you're kind of squishing a bug. Yeah, sometimes that ball gets away from you, <laughs> just keeping track of it. And then go ahead and take that ball um, right underneath your toe your big toe and then trying to get your the metatarsal head so right where your toe bends this place right here we want that to be sort of tucked in and then your big toe is making a little ski jump here and we're going to push the big toe into your ball this is where having something squishy is kind of nice and then release that big toe and try to pull it up higher and push into the ball and release and push and release. So not only are we stretching the toe in this orientation, but we're building a little bit of, I mean, I guess we could say we're building a little bit of strength in the toe by activating the muscles. Great. And then we're just gonna briefly do the other four ish toes. So you can let this toe hang off to the side. And if you need to take your finger and push it, 
and then the other toes are still lifted. So we're going to try to push that toe, the big toe down into the ground and let your other toes be on the ball. You can see that my pinky toe is a little funny. Good. And then go ahead and push those toes into the ball. Again, a little muscle activation and then release and push and release. Push and release one more time. Good. And then take that ball and go ahead and just mash out your foot a little bit more. Sensing where in your foot feels more tender. And just as a reminder too, I like kind of thinking about the ball in the bottom of my foot is creating a surface that my foot can sort of ooze around and the bones can separate and ooze around. So I want, I want your foot to look really wide during or at, at least after afterwards. Good. All right. And then go ahead and take your foot. Uh, again, if you need to hold on to something, hold on to something. Take your toenails down to the ground. And then rock your foot right and left across the five toes. And remember, my feet are kind of weirdly flexible in some ways. So if your foot doesn't look like this, no big deal. Just try to replicate something like it. And then we're going to go into some circles for your ankles as well. And then reverse the direction there. Good. And then go ahead and stomp out that foot. I'm going to not stomp very loud to be I'm not obnoxious, but go ahead and make some loud stomping with that foot. Make sure that the vibration is going through the foot up through your knee and your thigh to your hip. And then go ahead and just relax. Stand with your feet side by side towards one another. And if you, if it's helpful to close your eyes in order to feel your body better, go ahead and do that. Close your eyes and feel if the foot that you just worked with, does that feel any different than the other foot? And if so, maybe you have an adjective to describe what that feels like. I, the words that usually come to my mind are like width, um, heaviness. I almost feel my body weight more on the side. And then go ahead and look down at your feet and notice if there is a physical appearance, um, a contrasting physical appearance between the side that you just did and the side that you didn't just do. And you may find that the side that you just did is either kind of more lively, maybe more blood flow in that foot. It physically looks wider on the ground. Great. So then it's probably worth doing the other side. So go ahead and bring that ball back to the other foot. And we'll just run through the same sequence on this other foot. So first off, we're just letting the ball um, sort of stretch the joints inside the foot, the intrinsic sort of joints there. Letting your foot become wide and ooze over the surface. And for anyone with really stiff feet, this may not be very comfortable. And um, I promise you, it does get better the more you practice it. This is something that you can do every morning as you wake up, you're waiting for the coffee to brew. Go ahead and bring your foot, uh, the ball right underneath the ball of the foot and go ahead and try to pull. So kind of grabbing the ball with your toes. And then release and try to spread your toes, let them flare. And then pull in. 
and let them flare. Nice. Just do that two more times, squeezing and flare. And last one, squeezing and flare. Great. Bring the ball back to the back side of your foot. So not at the heel, but right underneath, right kind of in front of your heel bone. And we're gonna twist the leg a little bit so that the ball strums. On the bottom of your foot, you kind of have, um, keep going, but I'm just gonna give you a little anatomy. The bottom of the foot, the fibers kind of run from like bottom to top. And so with the movement of this way on the ball, we can kind of strum the fibers like a guitar. Yep. And then go ahead and bring it back to the top part of your foot. And we're gonna do your big toe. So as best as you can, try to get your other toes down and your big toe is the one getting the big stretch. And then go ahead and push your big toe down into the ball and then release and push and release and push and release. We got one more time, push and release. Nice job. And then we'll go ahead and do the other four toes. So sliding the ball over, let your big toe drop down in front and then your other toes over the top of the ball there. Again, squeezing the ball with your toes and then release. A little bit different than what we did at the beginning of the sequence here where the toes are flexed back. Good. One more time. Nice job. And then go ahead and just mash out the bottom of your foot. Last time through. Good. Set the ball off to the side. Let's go top of the foot stretch. So nails are down towards the ground and we're gonna roll the foot from right to left. Hold on to something if you need a little balance support. And circles here as well. Yeah. And then go ahead and switch the direction of your circles. And then pound out that foot, let the vibration and kind of impact stimulate everything in your body. And if you're feeling good, we'll go ahead and just go into a march or even a jog, depending on where you're at today. And if you want to go into a full hop, go into a full hop. Make sure that you're paying attention to your body and you're doing something that's appropriate for you. Yep, so you have lots of options. Marching, jogging, or hopping, full hop. And we're gonna go for about 10 more seconds. Keep going, like jump rope hopping. A little bigger there, Adam, a little taller. Get up there, quick, 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 quick. Yeah, there you go. Nice, good. Four, three, two, and one, nice job. All right, go ahead and walk around your room and just check in with your body to see how you're feeling. Some of you came in with some back pain today, so maybe just kind of check in with that. Sometimes if you release sort of the end point of your body, because your feet are so intimately um, in relationship with your low back, it's in the same fascial line, um, our back pain can feel a little better after some foot release. All right, we're gonna just do a standard roll down here. If you know yourself to lose balance quite a bit, I want you to do this with your back against a wall. If you're relatively decent in your balance, um, just be aware of your surroundings here. So we're gonna start by dropping your chin down and rolling 
your body forward bit by bit, vertebrae by vertebrae. Let your head and hands be heavy. Rolling yourself all the way down towards the floor. And if you get your fingers down to the ground, high five, but not necessary. Take a breath into the back part of your ribs to let your ribs expand upward. And then bring yourself back up into your full stand. And your head will be sort of the last thing that pops up on top of the column. Okay, we're gonna do that just three more times. Take your time on the way down. You can also use this as an assessment to see how your body is mobilizing and segmenting. We can come back to this at the end of the class as a post-class check-in. Take a moment at the bottom to breathe into your ribs. And also, if you can, shift your weight a little bit more into the balls of your feet, the front part of your foot, and use that pressure through your toes. Since we warmed up that toe push, you can use that toe push to help you come back up to stand. All right. And I've just done two. That's how slow we're going. So we have one more to go. Chin down. Let yourself roll. Hanging through. I prefer you to be again forward on the front part of your foot. Just another reminder. Take a breath into your ribs to let them expand behind you. And then pull yourself back up to standing, keeping your weight forward on the balls of your feet. Head pops up on top as sort of your last piece there. Nice. All right. Oh, yeah. I wanted to do this before we do the other stretches. So go ahead and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm bringing y'all with me and on a camera adventure today so we can all get these views. Um, I mentioned at the beginning, hopefully on the recording, but I know I did before that we, um, I would love for you to have a wall to work with today. So go ahead and find an empty wall space. Um, and if you need a quick demo of what we're doing, maybe watch first and then find your wall space. But we're going to put the toes on top of, like on the wall if you can. And for some of you, this may already be a stretch. Um, if you need a little bit more, you're just gonna bend your knee into the, um, no problem, into the wall. and then release off the wall with your, your knee. So shifting forward into the wall and shifting back. Beautiful. And to be honest, you're gonna, you may even just get a really nice stretch keeping your foot flat on the floor and leaning into the wall that way. So. Find something that feels good for you. And we're just gonna do two more of those sort of active ankle stretches. Good, good. And then let's go ahead and do the other side. So foot up against the wall and bending in with your knee and then shifting out. In general, I don't like holding stretches for sustained periods of time maybe 10 seconds max, because rarely do we want to train our muscles to be strong um, in, in one length. So in other words, we're always moving and we want our strength to be dynamic and be able to support us in a, in, as we move through life. It's, it's rare that we're just not doing anything at all. And I know that maybe we sit a lot during the day, but we're doing things with our hands. Um, so in our arms, we're reaching for things. So we're not totally static, if that makes sense. Great. And then I understand that I'm not showing my head, but I think this viewpoint is best for the demonstration. You're gonna place your hands on the, on the wall with just, just a light fingertip grip just a light fingertip grip. 
Make sure that you're far enough away from the wall so you're not gonna bonk your head into the wall. But we're gonna float the heels up and then lower your heels back down. Float the heels up and lower the heels back down. Let's go ahead and do this a few more times. Taking note of your own movement patterns. What is your strategy right here? Do you have a tendency to go on the outside of the ankle, going on the outside of the foot, or across all 10 toes evenly? Do you bias one foot? As many of you know, when we do these classes, whenever we're doing exercises, it's a constant assessment of how we're moving. Rarely am I ever asking you to do something without thinking, right? That's what makes movement with the brain body connection different than just, you know, going to the gym and repping out your weights and things. I mean, you can also rep out your weights and get the mind body connection, but in this class we're, we're learning that connection. All right, maybe your calves are getting a little bit of a workout. That's a good thing. <laughs> Go ahead and do maybe two more. Keeping, just noticing where your weight is distributed. Excellent. All right, come on back to your station. Where we're, I say station, meaning like this is my station here. And let's just do some eye drills to get our eyes uh, in the equation. If you have a pen or pencil. Yeah, if you have a pen or pencil, um, let's go ahead and use that as a tool for us to stay accountable. So we're just going to hold the pen or pencil out in front of you. Um, actually, this first one, you can also look at something just in the distance, but keep your head facing your pen or pencil. And if you need to use your hand on your chin, do that. You're just going to flick your eyes to the left and take note of something on the left side of your room that you're able to see with just that eye shift. And then flick your eyes to the other side of the room, to the right side of the room, and find something in that area that you can localize a little bit more. It's like very identifiable, a red book or a piece of art. And we're gonna go from the left side of the room to the right side of the room, focusing I'm sorry, we're gonna to go to the left side of the room to your pencil, to the right side of the room to your pencil, left side of the room, pencil, right side of the room, pencil, so on and so forth, every time hitting your target, okay? So going to the right, target, pencil, left, pencil, right, okay? And some of you are on it and going and awesome job. Just your eyeballs should move, not your head, not the rest of your body. Yep. And we're gonna do about two more of those. And last one. Good. And then go ahead and rub your eyeballs and just give it a little bit of a, yeah. Great. So we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to be working on a diagonal from the upper right quadrant to the lower left quadrant. Um, the pencil, again, is just kind of to cue your body, okay, like what's in the middle? So if you want to use that as sort of a pit stop. So if you go up to the right quadrant, find something that's maybe on the ceiling, and then your right shoulder or your left shoulder, I want you to try to look at your left shoulder. So right upper quadrant, something on the ceiling maybe, and then left shoulder, right ceiling, left shoulder. And if you wanna do the pit stop of your pencil in between, that's a nice sort of neutral place to meet and then move on. One more. Good, and then rinse out your eyeballs. Yeah. Okay, we just have one more of those. We're just gonna do the other diagonal. So upper left quadrant, right shoulder. You can pit stop at your pencil in the middle. Sit or stand up really tall so that you've opened those pathways in your neck.
One more. This one's pushing me today. Good. And then eyeball wash. Yep. All right, one last drill before we go into a bit more movement. Again, we're gonna do convergence. Convergence is your ability to have an object come closer to your face and your eyeballs draw to the center of your face in order to stay focused. So two eyeballs focused on one object um, so that your brain still perceives one object as opposed to two inputs from the eyes, okay? So we're gonna start with the pencil or pen. Um, about a foot or two away from your face and drawing it in towards your nose. Make sure that you're coming in on a straight line. If you have a, um, a, a large enough discrepancy in the eye dominance, you may have a tendency to go to the side that you're more dominant. So just make sure you're coming straight in and you're gonna come in as far as you can still see one object. As it starts to become two objects, you've gone just a little too far, but here's the deal. You're gonna come into that spot and just move back an inch and forward an inch and see if you can pull your eyes to accommodate that closer, uh, that closer distance. And you're gonna maybe do that little hover inch forward, hinge back maybe five times and then pull the pen or pencil all the way out to the start point, okay? So we're gonna pull in about five oscillations close in and then pull it all the way back up. If you have a Brock string and prefer, prefer to use a Brock string, um, you can switch to your Brock string, just moving the beads back and forth. If you don't know what that is, no big deal. I prefer Brock string for convergence. It's just not everyone has that. Good, and we're gonna do that one or two more cycles. So like full distance in five cycles and then back out would be one cycle. And we're gonna do that one or two more times. Seeing if we can pull that convergence in a little bit tighter. Good. Excellent, finish up wherever you're at there. And um, we're gonna come back to the wall. Um, so again, if you are doing, <laughs> if you are doing um, your roll downs against the wall or you can do it next to the wall, similar to what we started with. So go ahead and have your feet in parallel with one another. And we're gonna start with our head and draw your spine down towards the floor or um, segment your spine to fold over so that your hands can reach the floor. Good. And just notice how that feels in contrast to the first set that we did. And then make sure that you're shifted forward in your toes. I noticed that my body was sort of already there for that. So that's a cool reflexive change. Launch yourself off the ground by pressing through the toes and pull yourself up to that full stand. Your eyes and head come up on top. Perfect. We're going to do that three more times. The challenge for you now would be to back yourself up against the wall and see if you can do, so your, your heels are maybe four or five inches away from the wall. And are you able to do that motion without getting your, pushing your butt back? and hitting the wall. And if that was too easy, then you just inch your feet back and see how close you can get to the wall without actually touch, touching it with your bum. And what that encourages is that you keep your weight forward in your toes. And we mentioned in the past that when you have your weight in your toes, you are quote unquote in your core. <laughs> You're in your core which is something that we wanna have for balance and agility. Last one here, go ahead and roll down. Whoop. Push yourself to get close to the wall with your heels, but try not to let your bum actually touch, which means you sort of need to pull your hips underneath you before they go backwards. Good. 
All right, once you finish that one, no rush, but once you finish it, go ahead and turn around so that you're facing the wall again and feet are underneath you about hip width apart. We're gonna pull ourselves up into that heel lift. And I mentioned, I say it's a, it's a heel float because I want you to have the sensation of your body pulling your heels up as opposed to it being a calf raise where you're pushing down off the ground. So we had two of those. We did a little bit of the pushing off the ground in terms of the jumping that we did earlier. So I want, now I want you to imagine that your heels are floating upwards, um, which is a little bit of elusive, but hang with me. So we're gonna pull the heels up. Think about your, your body getting pulled up upwards by maybe a helium balloon. And we're gonna bend our knees to come down towards the floor as low as you can go in a squat. You may not get down quite as low as me, <laughs> but that's okay. But that's why I have the wall here so that I can, I can lean into it a little bit, especially when I stand back up, okay? So I really encourage you to use a wall. Um, I use a wall when I do these for myself in my own program. So go ahead and come all the way down. Try not to rest at the bottom keeping your weight in your toes. We're gonna lower the heels down in between your reps. So heels go down, heels float up, bend your knees so that you come as low as you can go. Do not rest at the bottom of your squat, press yourself back up and then the heels lower down, okay? And again, I really encourage you to use a wall so that you can work into more of the balls of your feet and you don't feel like you're gonna fall backwards. I want you to almost lean forward into the wall when you're doing this. Good, and we're gonna do about eight more. One. Two. Three. Yep, four. My feet are getting a good workout. I hope yours are too. Five. Six. Seven. And last one. Eight. Nice work. All right, come on back to your station. We're gonna do another convergence drill. So we didn't do slow pursuit, smooth pursuit, and convergence. Let's do the smooth pursuit first. So last, last time we were right here, I had you flick your eyes to one side and flick your eyes to the other. So essentially you were jumping from your focal point. You were jumping from this focal point to that focal point. Slow pursuit or smooth pursuit is your ability to track an object through space as it moves. How smooth can you track that object? Like if you were seeing a car go down the street, could you track that car going all the way down with your eyeballs? So we've done this one before. I just wanted to give a name to it. So we're gonna start at the center and pull your eyeballs all the way over to the left side of your face following, so tracking the pen this time and then bring it back to the center. Switch your hands and go over to the right side and then back to the center. As you're working through this, maybe take the hand that's not doing anything, place it on your chin so that you keep yourself honest and you're moving your eyeballs and not your head. Anna, my friend and I, we were playing paddle ball uh, yesterday which is kind of just like you try to volley a little ball with paddles if you don't know what that is. And I was like, I was missing it. I was like off the cuff. I like couldn't, like I would be just barely missing the ball. And so I just did like a little bit of convergence drills. And then I was like, good, I'm on. <laughs> it's like little magic tricks to get you better at hand-eye coordination. Good, give yourself a little face wash. Eye wash, whatever, rub it out. We're gonna do that smooth pursuit. We're gonna do six in one diagonal and then six in the other. So don't wait for me, go ahead and just do six in each direction. Again, make sure that you're not moving your head, you're really moving your eyeballs.
once you get your six in one direction, don't wait for me. If you need to, you know, rinse your eyes, flush your eyes, rub your eyes before you do the other side, go ahead and do that or just go right into it. Good, I've got one more. If you're done, just hang tight. It will be right there. Go ahead and rub your eyes and finish that up for yourself. All right, and then one last bit for convergence. So last time we did, we held it out, we came in and we did little oscillations, right? So this time we're gonna go out, we're gonna come in and do little circles in your most in your closest convergence little circles you do about three in one direction three in the other and then pull it back out we're going to do three of those cycles okay so we're going to pull in pull in as close as you can sit up tall three circles little circles one two three switch the direction three two one and then back out and again we'll pull in Three circles, here we go. Good. I'm doing this while sitting on one of these wobbly chairs and it's like <laughs> really throwing me off. Wonderful, nice job. Good. How are we doing? Excellent. All right. Go ahead and make your way down to the floor. Um, since I think everyone here, uh, we've been all getting on the floor. So cool. And uh, let's let's have you come into your quadruped position. Wow, my hands are tight. So I get down on the ground. So a quick little like stretch if your hands are tight. <laughs> My feet feel really good. <laughs> We've neglected the hands, haven't we? <sighs> All right, so whenever you're ready, come on down to the ground. And I'd like you to, as best as you can, get your toes to tuck underneath right here. Yeah, as best as you can. Go ahead and shift forward over your wrists and shift back over your heels, stretching your feet. Yep. So we're just gonna do a little bit of hip kind of stretches and mobility, um, and then we'll come up and do our final agility drills with the, the brain speed reactions. Good. All righty. And then right here, go ahead and bring your uh, left leg out to the side. And um, if this is challenging for you to do, you can hold on to a chair and do this one, but I'm going to stay on the floor for, for ease here. As best as you can, try to get your toes to be forward so you get this nice side of the ankle stretch. And then we're just going to rock forward and back from here. And you may be getting a big stretch on those inner thighs and that's intentional. <laughs> If this is really strong for you as well, you can try putting a pillow underneath this knee uh, that's on the floor and that might help with the, the range also. If you find that your leg is slipping out quite a bit, um, you can um, put your foot up against a wall, um, but that is indicative that we need a little bit more inner thigh strengthening if you feel yourself sliding so maybe just note that for yourself i need to strengthen my inner thighs a little bit more good and then go ahead and tuck that leg back in and let's just roll out our wrist really quick if my body was feeling it maybe yours was too okay just a little bit <laughs> okay 
again, you're now on a wobbly chair. This is really going to challenge your vestibular watching me <laughs> if the camera's all right. All right, so we're going to go out to the side. And again, toes are forward. You may feel a stretch on the side and then setting the hips back and sitting the hips forward. And, and I was just thinking as I was saying that, um, I'm just making maybe, maybe making y'all jealous that I've been hanging out at the beach. And um, I was just going to say today we're going whale watching. And so it's probably good that I'm warming up my vestibular system so that I don't get seasick, right? Good, rocking back, rocking forward. Perfect. And then go ahead and bring that leg back in. And we're going to come into a tall kneeling position, which just means both knees on the ground and bringing yourself up into a tall kneel. Mm -hmm. And if you need to hold on to something, hold on to something, but we're going to bring your left knee forward. And you know what? This floor is actually kind of hard. So I'm going to put a pillow underneath my knee. And as best as you can, let's get those toes to tuck under like we did earlier. So I'm going to have those tucked in behind me. Good. How's this position for y'all? We're good. All right, so if you have your left knee forward, then um, actually quick, quick uh, tutorial on stance as well. If you need support and balance, you can bring your leg up to the side and that's gonna create a bigger base for you to sort of like move yourself around in. However, we've been working and I kind of have been doing this silently in the background, but we've been working on this midline connection, your inner thighs. So I would like it as best as you can, try to bring that leg inward. And if you can have the toe facing forward, the thigh facing forward and pretty narrow or as narrow as you can go, that's ideal, okay? Cause that's really gonna challenge now your lateral systems. Go ahead and take your right hand into your left thigh, good. And just right here, I want you to push your thigh into your hand and your hand into your thigh. Good, and then release. And feel the pressure going into one another, engage again. And release, good, good, and engage. And release, we're gonna do that two more times. It's, a, it's what we kind of did with the toes. It's called an isometric contraction, meaning you're engaging your muscles, but they're not really like moving, moving anywhere, all right? So we're just getting this engagement. Good, last one, because you're gonna need that inner thigh connected into uh, your stability on this next set of exercises. Great, nice job. We're gonna place your hands behind your head. And if you have the shoulder mobility, go ahead and lift through and traction the base of your skull, like lift your hairline up. If this feels really challenging in your shoulders and you're kind of just like pushing your head forward, I would rather you be here in front than here in the back. Okay, so a couple options, either cross arms in the front or hands behind your head. And I'll, I'll try to do both here. So our left foot is forward. We're gonna side bend over to the left and expose all of those ribs. You'll also notice that this gets to be maybe a little bit of a balance challenge. And if your leg was out here, this would be a lot easier, right? So keeping that foot forward and then go ahead and bring yourself upright and let's rotate to the left as well. Start with your eyeballs first, look at your left elbow and then finish the rotation by working through the ribs and then, sorry, and then actually finish the rotation by pulling your right, I'm um, sorry, let me start over. Let's reset. I know because there's a lot of pieces. So we're going to go eyeballs to the elbow, rotate the shoulders back, rotate the ribs back, and then slide your left hip back as well to get that little extra bit. You're still looking at your elbow. And then we're going to just return everything sort of forward at once. All right. So we're gonna, let's try that rotation again. Normally I'd alternate, but let's try the rotation again. So Eyes to elbow, shoulder back, 
ribs go back and then hip follows. So there's kind of this hip slide and bring it back forward. Nice, so we're gonna do that one more time. Eyes to the elbow, shoulder, ribs back and hip back. Now, when you have your hip back, try to continue squeezing your thigh towards the right. So your thigh, your leg didn't slide up to the side. You're still, even though you're pulling your hip back, your knee is still forward. And then bring it back in. Let's try that one more time. I know I said that was the last one, but never, you should never trust a Pilates teacher with reps, right? Here we go. So eyes to the left, shoulder back, ribs back, hip back. Squeeze that inner thigh across the midline. Good. And then reset. Nice job. Go ahead and switch your sides here. So we don't have to go through the whole tutorial, but noticing how far out you feel comfortable with this leg. Like if you just reflexively put in a position, that's kind of your baseline, that's your default. And then push yourself to be a little bit more narrow. Okay. So foot facing forward, thigh facing forward. Let's go hands behind your head or across your chest. Let's just get one side bend to open up that whole side body. Take a couple breaths into the ribs. Squeezing your hips to be forward, squeezing your bum forward, and then release yourself back up. All right. So now let's do that rotation. Eyes are going to go to the left, um, your right. Eyes are going to go to your right. And then head goes, shoulders go, ribs go, hips go. And so now that you kind of know the punchline, let's also pull your knee across to the right side, ah, across to the left side. And then sending yourself back up. I almost went through a whole class without mixing up my rights and lefts. So we're going to go eyes to the right, shoulder back, rib back, hip slides back, but keep your thigh moving to the left. And then back center. Good. We're going to do that two more times. Eyes, shoulder, ribs, and thigh pulls back. And then release. One more time, please. Eyes, shoulder, ribs, and thigh. Good, good. And bring it back to the center. Nice work. Go ahead and stand yourself back up. Getting off of the floor. And we're going to do some of the brain drills where I say left, right, center. We're going to do some of those drills um, here to finish up and kind of pull it all together into something fun and exciting. Um, today, we're going to be working on um, a little bit more. Man, my head's chopped off. That's all right. We'll get there. I want you to see my feet. So we're going to work on a little bit more of like a rotating movement. So in the past, we've done like side stepping. And so I want this to be more of a rotation backwards. OK, so it's going to go left would be the left side, right side. And if it's in the center, I want you to squat. OK, perfect. Are we ready? So we're going to do an auditory. Are we all clear on the idea? Oh, and if you're doing this from a chair, you can just um, you can do it like like that, okay? And then the squat might be just arms out in front. All right, come on, Steph, let's do this. Let's get organized. All right, ready, set, here we go. Left, right, center, right, center, left. Being nice for the first set. Center, left, right, left, left, right. Good. Try to get that rotation, Walter. Look behind you almost. Right, center. There you go. Left. Center, center, left, left, right, 
right, left, left, center, right, center, center, right, left, left, right, center, left, we're almost there, stay with me, right, left, center, right. Remember those last two. Great, nice job. Walk around the room, take a moment to sort of flush that out. Nice work. Good. So we're going to do that piece again. A um, couple changes that we're going to do for this last set. And also just to kind of bring something up as well. When you are um, doing your, your rotation, just this is going to move into like what we're going to do next week. So as you step back, I want there to be less of a weight shift. Like, I don't want you to actually weight shift into the back leg. I almost want it to be like tap and go. All right. So a little bit more um, like a quickness and not necessarily shifting your weight back, but reaching back and then coming back forward. Does that make sense? Okay. Bonus points if you turn your head behind you but you don't necessarily have to. That's gonna make it harder in the vestibular system to sort of recalibrate as you turn back forward. So if you feel like you wanna challenge your vestibular system, you'll also look backwards. But if that's too much for today, continue looking forward. All right, and then I'm also gonna change it so that you get to see, does everyone see the dots? Can everyone see the dots on the screen? Walter, are you on like a small like phone or something? Yeah, okay, so here's the deal. If you have um, the, a, good, a good visual of the dots and lines here, you are going to read through this yourself, okay? And you're gonna read through this yourself um, at your own pace, okay? So instead of hearing the, the cues, you're going to um, see what they are and then act on them. If that's something that you wanna do, go ahead and put me on mute so that I don't distract you because I think some of y'all are still going to want to um, hear it because if you're on an iPhone, this is too small. Okay. So if you want to use your, the visual of the screen share and these rainbow dots, go ahead um, and do that. Put me on mute right now and I'll sort of wave when we're done so that we all kind of recruit back. Okay. All right. Otherwise I'm going to do the verbal just like we did before. Here we go. Center. Right. Right, center, left, right, left, right. Nice job, faster this time. Center, left, center, right, right, center, left, right. Oops, I said that wrong. Center, left. Left, right, center, center, left, and right. Good, nice job. Walk around the room, shake it out. So those of you that tried the head turns, I saw some of you did the head turns like part of the time and then some, and then part of the time you stayed forward. Um, I'm wondering if that was, an unconscious thing or if because it was really hard and so you made the decision to just keep your eyes forward. Good. All right, we're going to do one more time and then I promise we're done. I'll let you uh, let you all go. This time I'm going to say three movements in a row and so it's going to be a little bit of a game of memory. So I'm going to say three movements in a row and you'll do the three and then I'll say the next three and then you'll do those three. And um, of course I'll give you time to complete the three. So three commands in a row. Can you remember the commands and then execute them as well? All right, are we ready? Same movements as before, either in the chair or standing up. Here we go. Right, left, center. 
Good. Center, right, left. Left, center, left. Right, center, right. Right, center, left. Center, right, left. Right, left, center. Right, right, center. Good, and then when you're done, go ahead and walk around the room and just shake that out. And we'll come back for this final reflection here and then we'll open the floor. Good. So again, this month's theme is working on foot and ankle, proprioception and mobility, working on a little bit of balance and agility and how that relates to the eye tracking of vestibular drills. Um, so I believe we got all of that in today. Go ahead and find a comfortable position here. And we're gonna do the quiet solitary reflection for two minutes. This is the time when you just let your body relax and reflect back on the last um, bit of time, the skills that you gained and the movement that you gained. It helps you store it in a more permanent place. So um, you can turn off your video if that makes you feel more comfortable and relaxed. I'm gonna turn off my um, audit. Uh, I'm gonna mute myself so that um, you don't get any background noise. Two minutes. And go ahead and take a, another breath or so in through the nose and then a longer exhale out through your mouth. And um, if you can see the screen from here, um, you can pop your head up. So as I mentioned, I'm visiting my friend here in San Diego and she is a even more nervous system movement nerd than I am. Um, but she has this chair and I wanted to share it with y'all because I'm pretty obsessed with it before I stop the recording. So this is called an ergo ergo chair and it kind of moves in all sorts of different directions. Um, and so if you are, I was thinking if you're one of the people that does that does these classes in a seated position, doing the class in maybe a more dynamic kind of seated object would um, bring some new value to the drills that we're doing. And I particularly liked balancing on it and doing some sort of reaction drills this way. So anyways, it's called an ergo chair. I get no commissions on it. I just 
have been loving this while I'm visiting my friend. All right, I'm going to turn off the recording. If y'all have anything new you want to share, um, it's uh, the floor is open.